Once more, uh, we can identify the midline bridging veins. Here we are putting some dural stitches in order to open the corridor. So we are deflecting the dura. After that, we already see the dense and opaque arachnoid membrane. So we decided to gentle dissecting, and here we can already see the tumor. Here we can see the posterior portion of the quadrigeminal cistern and the, the, the third ventricle. And we keep dissecting the tumor, especially from the blind spot. Here we try to separate the tumor from the Rosenthal's vein. And here we can already see a cleavage plan between the tumor and the surrounding veins. So gentle movements, the tumor from the and we leave the subgalian region for the final. And here we can already see a cleavage plan between the tumor and the surrounding veins. We coagulate and cut, dissect, very gentle, and here so gentle we can remove the tumor. The tumor. Almost and unblocked. The region and this is the final view and here we can of the, the, the corridor. The tumor and the this is another case in which um, we have Dissect. a non favorable tentorium. And here so we can, can remove so the tumor. We decided to go Almost in an OTP. The region. And this is the um, sometimes, here, if you have a new it might be helpful, but it's not this is another case, uh, uh, essential. Uh, here, we already opened the tentorium. No, no, we, we have the navigation for this surgery. Here, you can see the, the, the spleenium. And after that, we start to dissect the arachnoid, protecting the occipital lobe. Using gravity, it's a three quarter front position. And here we start to debulk the tumor. You can use the fuser, but sometimes uh, it might be very dangerous. So sometimes you prefer to use regular aspiration. And at the end, we can see. the cavity from the tumor. This is the post op in a gross total resection. This is another case, a three-year-old female shunt markers negative, and she had a metastasis in the cervical region. So we decided to do an occipital transtentorial approach, opening tentorium, coagulating dura, and starting the book in the tumor under the Gallen's vein. As uh, Professor Yu always says, and, and Dr. Atugo also, it's very important to learn how to break the tumor. You need to know how to break the tumor. This is one of the, the good tips in this kind of surgery. You need to learn how to break the tumor how to break the tumor, not uh, causing any damage to the surrounding structure. So here we can see already the aqueduct. And the pot soap, it's a total resection. Here it's another case for, for, and, and from Dr. an Dr. occipital transtentorial approach. It's very important to learn how to break the tumor. You need In this to case, to break the tumor. Uh, first, we need to, one of the, the good to see the rectus sinus to learn one centimeter laterally. Tumor. We start to coagulate to break the tumor, and to cut the tentorium, uh, causing any damage to the surrounding structure. So here we can see already the coagulate the dura. 
and see the arachnoid. Also, it's a total resection. Some Dura stitches in order to expand the corridor and have a better view from the other side. And here you can see the dense and opaque arachnoid. So gentle movements. We start to break the tumor. By the end, you can already see the third ventricle. And a gross total resection. This is a very interesting case, 12-year-old male, in conclusive markers. So the markers were positive, but they weren't higher enough. So here we can see there is a heterogeneous lesion that comes from the pineal region and goes laterally to the atrium. So in this case, we opted performing a subtotal resection if the pathologist in the OR. So we start the, the approach in OTT. This is a very interesting case, 12 year And then, as soon after the beginning, we start to see some, um, some components that favor the teratoma diagnosis. So the pathologist told us it is a teratoma, but we cannot be sure if it's a mature or immature teratoma. And as the markers were unconclusive, we thought it could be a mixed tumor. So we debulk it, we remove it what we could. We can see uh, calcified portions of the tumor, fat inside the tumor. So here we cut the tumor. And by the end, we have a clear field. This, this is the anatomic specimen. This patient went to, to radiotherapy and chemotherapy, and this is the result. So the patient is uh, with the disease control in the last three years and no neurological deficit. This is another case. It's uh, a male with a positive marker, positive alpha fetal protein. So and here we can see a huge tumor, a huge this, tumor. This is the anatomic specimen. And this is post-treatment. So to, there is no need for surgery in this case. It's a positive the result, tumor. No need for so surgery. So the patient is... Uh, and the tumor with the disease disappears. Disappears. in the last three years. Another case, 16-year-old, alpha fetoprotein is positive. Case, huge uh, tumor with a lot of flow voids, very vascular tumor. And this is the control, 2020, no tumor at all, maybe a, a little, little fragment of tumor around here. And this is a bifocal germinoma. So here it's a 14-year-old male with uh, diabetes insipidus and negative markers. So if you have a negative markers, you might think we need to do a biopsy. No, in these cases with a so bifocal lesion, there is no need for biopsy. Male, Straightforward for the, chemo uh, and radio, and here and is the result. Markers. The tumor so is a negative negative markers, you might think we need to do a biopsy. So to a man no, with a hammer, cases, everything a looks a like a nail. This comes from Mark Twain, no American novelist. So it's very important to know that even if you master the technique, Sometimes you might do some big problems for your patients. So it's very important to uh, evaluate the case in order to avoid problems, especially in pediatric populations. In our state Pernambuco, we have almost 10 million people. One third of them are under 19 years, which brings us 90 cases of CNS tumors per year in the pediatric population. We so far have 448 patients divided, 46% intertentorial, 54% supertentorial. And the germ cell tumors, they correspond to 4%, which, which is pretty similar to the literature. And here is our overall survival, 62% for all the tumors and 72% for the germ, germ cell tumors. So we are in uh, in the literature uh, media. So in conclusion, the pineal tumor surgery is safe, but it's very important to perform individual cases evaluation and to work in a multidisciplinary team. 
And it's very important to remember always, microsurgery is, is the is the is our working horse, is the base of, of neurosurgery. The importance of anatomical knowledge, the importance of lab training, and to being reference centers, learn a different approaches. You cannot use the same approach for all the patients. You need to adapt the approach for the patient. And to keep in mind the KISS principle, to keep it simple and safe always for our patients. So these are the two hospitals where I work, MIPI and Restauração. And here is the Restauração team led by Professor Yudo, to whom I thank every everything that I learned about pineal tumors. And uh, I'm very honored to, to, to his confidence and trust in the last 11 years that we've been working together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Igor, for your kindness of sharing with us your experience. So anatomy is the key point. Any questions and comments, Professor Jinson? Yes, uh, Dr. Igor, thank you for your very elegant lecture. So as you said, uh, if uh, to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So for some young generation neurosurgeon, they prefer to use the endoscope instead of the microscope scope via infratentorial approach. So do you have any comment on their choice? Well, I think that it also depends on the neurosurgeon's experience. But I think that the minimally invasive might be maximally dangerous sometimes. So it's very important to know anatomy and to keep control of the situation. Safety is the, is the word in neurosurgery. Our gap for a mistake is very narrow, it's very short. If you do a wrong movement and you have not enough space to, to, to deal with it, the patient might be injured. So I think that it's a valid option, but sometimes I see that they are pushing, the, pushing it too much, you know? especially when we are talking about big tumors. As you said before, in China, you have so many big tumors in the in acoustic neuroma. So I think that this pursuit of the minimally invasive might sometimes be maximally dangerous. So we need to, be, we need to calm down sometimes and uh, learn the basic of neurosurgery, micro neurosurgery, and the neuroanatomy. This is the, this is the, the, the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. To be honest, I'm also a microscope neurosurgeon, just like you. So maybe some questions from Ying Chuan, Professor Ma Hui. Professor Ma, welcome. Yeah, okay, Macros. And uh, thank you, Professor Egers. Uh, I have so uh, much more interesting for your topic. For so pinea surgery, Pinea region uh, tumors is very difficult because it's so fine and so deeply and also have some trouble of venous and uh, vascular and uh, other structures. So my question is, um, I, I think the most impo important thing is the position. Position is more important for this kind of regions. So I have interesting for your sitting positions. In China, sitting position is very real, seldom to use, uh, because an assessor doctor thinks it's very dangerous and also a big trouble of uh, arthrobosis. But uh, you know, I also, second question is uh, microscopic and idioscopic, because uh, uh, many doctors in China use uh, idioscopic for uh, remove this kind of uh, this region. Uh, tumors because it can make more close uh, to uh, to the region to doctors but uh, and then I agree your opinion uh, the most imp important thing is the simple and the thin for our much more doctors is uh, more have advantage in microscopic idioscopic is a little bit dangerous for me i think it's my opinions 
But uh, uh, I also want to ask you, do you feel city policing is more generous or not? This is more important. I think for me, I want to improve my uh, such kind of serving for city positions, but I get obstacle here. So in my questions, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Also, um, I don't think the same sitting position is dangerous, but I think that you need to have some precautions. As I told, I think it's very, it works very nice if you have the same neuroanesthesiologist. This is the first thing. You need to work with the same person every single surgery. This was what I learned from Dr. Bricolo in Italy. Yeah. He spent yeah. 20 Yes, he spent 23 years operating the same sitting position, even during acoustic neurinomas, and he only had three main complications in 27, 30 years. I've never had any kind of major complication at all, uh, but I think, uh, as you said, Professor, things start in positioning. If you have a good position, the corridor is going to open for you. And we keep it simple, simple, always keep it simple. Um, in terms of endoscopy, I think that neuroendoscopy cannot be seen as a specialty. It needs to be seen as an instrument, as the microscope is an instrument for us. It might be helpful. You can use it, you can add it, as an adjunct, for example, to, to, to double check if there is a residual tumor. But most of the cases, I don't think it's necessary. And I think it's very dangerous because you only have the 2D. You only have the 2D. You don't have the, the, the deep uh, knowledge. So this is very important when we are working in deep-seated lesions. And the proprioception is very different. It's very different. So you, if you have a vascular uh, lesion, for example, you might be in trouble if you are using an endoscope until you control the bleeding. Yeah. Sometimes when you have a bleeding, even the microscope, it might be, be hard to deal with. So I think that um, my, uh, the problem is sometimes uh, the, the, young, the young neurosurgeons, they, they, they learn first endoscopy and then they go to learn microsurgery. Micro, micro it it yeah. needs to be the opposite. You need to practice micro neurosurgery every day. If you don't do micro neurosurgery every day, it's gonna be very hard for you to achieve the skills that are demanding for this kind, especially this kind of, of, of surgery, difficult surgeries with a high risk for the patient. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you much. Thank you. Professor Wu, in China, there is just one specific surgeon for pineal tumors. Who deal with that in this uh, kind of disease? In, in Huashan Hospital, for example. In our hospital, uh, the pineal region surgery belongs to the neuro-oncological surgeon, uh, something like me, someone like me. So we are mm -hmm. responsible for pineal region uh, tumor reception. But for pediatric cases, they belong to the pediatric neurosurgeon. Dr. Yudo, any information for us as youngers uh, about this? I, I couldn't, uh, thank you. I couldn't agree more. And uh, so uh, the ego's lecture was perfect. So I have a, a conflict of interest to declare. <laughs> he was, was one of my best residents I have ever had. And that's why he's been aggregated to our department has been one of my followers when I retire and it's fantastic neurosurgeon his results are very very good indeed I have also witnessed those results and those surgeries uh, he prefers a, a same sitting position I'm too old to do same sitting position that I do prefer three quarters uh, uh, OTT for all my patients and uh, talking about endoscope, uh, we started endoscope, endoscope in Brazil uh, in, in the 90s uh, in Recife. But now I think that um, uh, answering to the question of my uh, Chinese colleague, uh, I think that people are over 
using uh, this this tool because it's not a technique; it's a tool to help us. And uh, someone has said, as a, there is a say that a tool, uh, uh, a fool with a tool is still a fool. So I would add, uh, I would perpetuate this say uh, from my uh, from my point of view, saying that uh, a fool with a high tech tool not only remains a fool, but becomes a dangerous fool. So <laughs> don't overuse the technique because, as you said, neuroendoscopy can be very, very dangerous. Even a simple biopsy can turn out to be a, a cat catastrophe. So uh, use it when you really need it. So if you have the microscope, everything is there, why not use the microscope? I, I never had this sensation that oh, I'll do much better for my patient if I would have a, uh, uh, an endoscope. So we have the endoscope, but um, I never use for the pine use. Uh, thank you. Okay. Now let's move towards anatomy, which is the soul of neurosurgery with uh, Vanessa, representing uh, also as Melody, the Brazilian woman, women. So feel free, Vanessa, to share with us your experience on anatomy, microsurgical anatomy of white matter tracts in neurosurgical procedures. Vanessa is from Paraíba, is from our province here, and he was mm -hmm. the last fellow of Dr. Rotham, has shared with him his last hours and moments together. So welcome, Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be here. Good evening for everyone here in Brazil. Good morning for everyone in China. Uh, ni hao. Uh -huh. So uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, your invitation, Marcus. Ni hao. And, ni hao. <laughs> and uh, I'm very grateful for the, um, to the Northeastern Society of Neurosurgery. It was in a conference in 2006 um, that I, it was my first conference in neurosurgery in 2006, and it was uh, with this society. And in 2004, I was there in Recife with Dr. Igor, Dr. Ildo, and it was very important for me to really decide to go into neurosurgery. And it's, a, it's very uh, important and special for me to be here, also with the uh, neurosurgeons from China, from uh, Inchuan. I've been to China in 2018 the, in our first uh, Rotten Society meeting in Tianjin, and it was very special. I really hope to go back to China and to get to meet all of you in person one, uh, when everything get back to uh, our real normal, that it's quite far here in Brazil, unfortunately. So, um, and it's a real honor also to be surrounded by uh, giants here uh, tonight. Um, I'm going to present a little bit more about the microsurgical anatomy because uh, Dr. Jinsung already did a great present presentation. So I'm going to, uh, try to go a little deeper in the deeper structures also uh, and help you to understand a little bit better the, the base, as Dr. Igor said, for uh, neurosurgery, that's the microsurgical anatomy. So here we have a uh, lateral view of the brain. And just bear with me, the neurosurgeons, I'm going to do a little um, small introduction for the residents and, and students that we have here. Uh, I, I'd like to invite you to have that X-ray view and find out the most important white matter fibers uh, for the neurosurgical procedures. Uh, to find out, find out those white matter fibers, we use the Kringler technique um, that we freeze the brain for two uh, weeks um, about uh, 16 degrees, minus 16 degrees Celsius. And then we get to dissect each fibers that we have association fibers, projection fibers, commissural fibers, and let's see a little bit. So here anterior to the um, central sulcus, we have the front frontal lobe, 
posterior we have the parietal lobe, um, and posteriorly to it we have the occipital lobe, and anterior to the occipital lobe and inferior we have here the temporal lobe. That is related to um, audition, not, uh, to hearing, and uh, and also to memory. And uh, in in our first lecture with Dr. Barba. We had a discussion with Dr. Jeans on about um, tinnitus and problems after uh, vestibular shivanoma. So, what could you do to help with those patients, even after the cochlear um, the cochlear implant? Because even even though that helps, sometimes uh, we still have problems with those patients. So we also, in functional, we are trying to, I am a functional surgeon, so we, we are always trying to, to see what we can do more for the patients. And something that is being studied over the last um, almost 20 years, and I, I brought this uh, picture, I just got this picture to add here, because it's a, a very nice and elegant study from Germany um, from 2005. And they showed uh, they got 14 patients and then randomized those patients to patients that had tinnitus. And also they had um, they had implanted the, the cochlear implant to get to try to get better. But then they they had these uh, transcranial mag magnetic stimulus and then um, they could show after this uh, procedure, it's it's not invasively. I don't know if you ever saw that, but it, it's some, it, they simulate the motor area and they got to show uh, an hyperactive area in the superior temporal sulcus. So in about 80% of these patients, they had a decrease in tinnitus. So just an addition here, and it's nice to see how uh, they, the image, the pet, the PET scan, the MRI adds to, they add to our neuroanatomy. So, and then once we get, we, we freeze those brains, that I, as I said, we get to dissect layer by layer. And then we have the U fibers and we have the superior longitudinal fasciculus, arc, arcuate fibers, as Dr. Jensen showed very well, the insula that he, just showed you. And once we go deeper, we have the stream capsule, claustrum, spinal capsule, deep there. And then we have the putamen, okay? And also the uncinate fasciculus, the inferior frontal, uh, uh, frontal oxy, ox, occipital fasciculus or the famous IFOF. And um, as we move we also have the importance of the tractography and all the all those understanding all those those fibers when you go to surgery and this is um in a, one of our papers on the review so and then we have the uh optic radiation here in purple as a laugh one two three and then we have the cartilage spinal uh, tract here in relation to the ventricle and once we go deeper and these are some dissections that uh, just came out in neurosurgery. We have um, the, these projection fibers here that are coming up here. That's the uh, cartilage spinal tract, okay? And then here, putamen that we saw first with Dr. Jensen, and I, I just showed you in the previous dissection. And we have these commissural fibers coming from one hemisphere to the other. And then it's a very important landmark for us in functional neurosurgery. That's the anterior commissure. And once we go deeper, we can see here putamen and then GPE and GPI. And then I've removed here the cartilage spinal tract. And then you can see the red nucleus here, the subthalamic nucleus right superior and anterior to the red nucleus, and here GPI and GPE. And here the optic tract, okay? The optic tract, optic chiasma, and then um, lateral geniculate body in the thalamus. And I wanted to show you also this because uh, here we have going even deeper, we have the putamen. And 
uh, maybe here it's one uh, when Dr. Marcos asked doc, uh, Dr. Jinson about the when we get to the insula, uh, how is the cognition after, how is the personality and how we are getting to, how we are affecting that. So um, we don't have a real uh, lim limit with the, between the putamen, and you can see here between the putamen and the substantia nominata that it's part of the limbic system. So, um, it's very important to be careful when we are going um, medially and inferiorly to, and also, of course, because of the lenticular straight arteries that I'm going to show later. And in this anterior view, you also, let's uh, just remember, I just showed you putamen continuing to the substantia nominata. So here we have substantia nominata here, inferiorly anterior. And when we go medially, we have the accumbens, okay? And then superiorly and continuing to accumbens, we have the head of the caudic nucleus, okay? And we have these fibers, and these are, it's very, it's not easy to see those fibers, but I, I, I imagine you can see here, these white matter fibers here, that it's the anterior limb of the internal capsule. We simulate those, uh, those fibers when we are treating OCD um, in deep brain stimulation, okay? But it's a little bit more posterior than here. But you can see that those fibers um, are real and we can really see that because in some papers, it's not, uh, it's not mentioned and even it's, it's uh, some, someone already said that it's impossible to see. And it was one of the, of the things that I got to Dr. Rotten and said, oh, Dr. Rotten, I think it's possible. What do you think? And he, he told me, Vanessa, that's how people discover things. And he agreed with me. And, and this is one of the dissections that I showed that. And then, um, but then when we are going from inferior, I'm going to show you from, I, we ju I just showed from lateral, medial, and then let's go from inferior so you can, kind of understand, have that X-ray view, but in a 3D way, okay? So in an inferior view, we have here the anterior commissure coming from one hemisphere to the other, okay? Again, those fibers that I just showed you, but then in another view, we have here the anterior limb of the internal capsule, okay? And then medial to this anterior limb, we have accumbens, and lateral, we have substantia nominata. Okay, and the, the region that we stimulate in deep brain stimulation, it's right posterior here, right anterior to the anterior commissure and getting the posterior portion of this um, anterior limb of the internal capsule. And of course, getting accumbens and stimulating this limbic area. Okay, and then um, going deeper, we have STN both sides here, GPI both sides. Even deeper, we have mammilla bodies, um, both sides here, fornix. What's the function of uh, mammilla bodies? Remember, mammilla bodies, memory, okay? So it's memory, it's related to memory for the students that are here. And then um, also in this inferior, inferior view, and I'm going to show you a little bit better for uh, some surgical procedures related to functional, just a little bit uh, at the end. But here we have the, uh, optic radiation, and here in a deeper view. In this medial view, we go going deeper. We have uh, the medial lemniscus here, posterior. I removed the portion here of the thalamus, and then we have STN superior and anterior to the red nucleus, and here the pineal that uh, Dr. Igor just showed you. Okay, you, you can see here superior colliculus, inferior colliculus, and then the pineal right superior. Um, in this uh, kind of deeper view, we can see the fora fields that we, we have here the red nucleus, uh, subthalamic nucleus, and right superior, we have lenticular fasciculus, we have the portion of the zona incerta, and uh, thalamic fasciculus. In a superior view, we, well, once we go deeper, 
we can see um, the single fibers here that I've removed a portion of it. And then uh, corpus callosum here and here and posterior. And we have the caudate both side thal thalamus medially. And here we can see the relation between the insula and also with the uh, basal ganglia, the caudate nucleus and the thalamus here. And once we go deeper, we can even see better this relationship between the insula and then putamen and GPE and GPI and the caudate. And here you can see even better this anterior limb of the internal capsules of the, the, these fibers uh, coming between the, the head of the caudate, the caudate and the putamen. It's much easier to see from superior, as you can see. Okay, and then um, once we go deeper, we have all the basal ganglia that I, I mentioned. Uh, as you can see here, red nucleus both sides, sub subthalamic nucleus both sides. And in, uh, in an anterior view, we have going deeper, we have the um, uncinate fasciculus, we have red, the, the optic tract here, both sides, um, mammillary body, mammillary bodies here, both sides. And then going deeper, we have cerebral peduncle here, both sides. And also, uh, once we remove some of the, those fibers of the cerebral peduncle, we have deeper um, STN, both sides, subthalamic nucleus, both sides, to be sent Niagara, uh, when, once we are deeper. Here we have the anterior commissure in another view. Can you see these fibers here coming from one hemisphere to the other hemisphere? I didn't have that uh, view before going to the lab. I, I went to the lab uh, five years ago and I started understanding this neuroanatomy once I, I, I went every step, stopping and studying and dissecting more and getting these knowledge, the deeper knowledge. And then um, in a bigger view here, uh, in a zoom view, we have GPI here, both sides. Again, the accumbens and then substantia nominata here, continuing with the putamen here, both sides. And here we have some fibers of the um, corticospinal tract. And um, if you want to get a deeper um, knowledge in these uh, in these dissections, I recommend this article that just came out in neurosurgery last month. And also, I recommend you, you read this um, supplement that we have very important information there. And I want I want to invite you to participate in a very quick chat uh, if you are able to answer in the chat you can answer for me directly or, or or for the participants i want to ask you just because it's too late here in brazil maybe someone is kind of sleepy so i want to ask you here um where is the corticospinal tract um a b or c Five seconds, you can answer um, in the chat, okay? All right, so most okay. people are saying A. And then our second question, uh, what, where is the medial lemniscus, A or B? Five seconds. All right, so here we have the corticospinal tract again in A, and then the said B, said right, that is the medial lemniscus. So once we get um, this knowledge of the big fibers and the fibers that are related to tumors and, and also that we have to, all the fibers we have to understand the function and try to improve the function and to not, um, to not perturbate the function of these fibers once we are operating. If you are operating tumors, if you are doing uh, vascular surgery, any surgery, epilepsy surgery, any surgery that you are performing, you have to 
to have that in mind. But also, not only the big fibers, we also have to pay attention to small fibers. And mainly when we are uh, thinking about uh, function on our surgery, and and also with maybe small tumors in the deep um, in the deep areas of the brain, in the thalamus, in the in the basal ganglia. If you are performing a therapeutic procedure, that we need to go there and get a small piece of that tumor. It's important to understand this neuroanatomy. Uh, so once we and, and go into the, the deep brain simulation, uh, we perform this study to understand where not only um, the, the GPI should be target, targeted, but also the special portion of the GPI should be targeted. So, and then we, we understood that the area that was targeted um, in the primary cortex, motor cortex, and the supplementary motor cortex, premotor cortex, got the best improvements for the patients. Okay, showing the importance the importance of the cognitive connectivity and also the all these white matter fibers connected to these basal ganglia and here to the thalamus for essential tremor. Uh, that in this case we we use the tremor rating um, score. So the patients they they had um, about seventy five percent decrease in this score when um, we got to the um, supplementary motor area and premotor cortex. And um, so just a little bit of the stereotactic procedures um, when we go deeper, we have. Here again, the U fibers and also the uh, superior uh, longitudinal fasciculus, corona radiata, and then going deeper, putamen, going deeper. We have GP and GPI, exactly as I showed you. The neuroanatomy is the same for all the procedures. We just have to apply um, every single surgery and adequate every single surgery for the knowledge of neuroanatomy that we have. And then once we have uh, deep there, we have the optic tract. So, and then on the other hemisphere, we had here a corona radiata and then um, thalamus and zona inseta and subthalamic nucleus. So, and then we have the posterior and lateral portion of the um, subthalamic nucleus that is important to stimulate, okay? Um, I just showed you, and one of the pictures uh, is illustrating the, I was very honored, this, uh, this book, it's coming out this month, now in August in US, uh, here in Brazil is arriving in October. I'm not sure when it's getting to China, but it's, uh, um, at, maybe at some point, but, uh, we, I, I, I had the honor to be to have one of the pictures that I just showed you here in this great book. And also, I'd like to show you some of the procedures that are coming out. I'm not sure here in Brazil we don't have that yet. This was one of the projects that Dr. Rotten invited me to to help once I was there in in UF. And then um, we did for insula and we did for amygdala and. Uh, hippocampus, and also um, I'm going to show you because it's related to the neuroanatomy and, and also uh, related to the question that Dr. Yudo um, asked uh, to Dr. Jinsung. So here we have the insula, and then once we are going deeper, we have string capsule, and then we're moving, we have uh, some fibers of IFOF and claustrum, and then I saw unsnake fasciculus, and then we start. We are starting to see, uh, and this is a beautiful dissection. This one was made by Seha. It's a it's a great neurosurgeon, and uh, it was, he he also was a fellow with Dr. Rotten. And we kind of divided this one was made by him. The other uh, dissections that I, I showed you uh, were always made by me. And then um, this is the the artery that Dr. Jinson uh, mentioned to you when we have to stop. Okay, so here we have 
this uh, lenticular straight artery that it's a, uh, and here even deeper, we have GPE and then also the lenticular straight arteries that we have to be very careful. So this is a paper that came, came out last year. And for the amyloid hypocompactomy, um, that's also, it's mainly for epilepsy, but it's also performed by, uh, for tumors in US. We have in this inferior view, we have the hippocampus and then the amygdala. Uh, it's very important to be careful with the surrounding areas, uh, with the, the larogenic late body, the um, optic radiation. And here in this deeper view, we can see even better. And then in this lateral view, we can see the, uh, the catheter coming uh, anteriorly and going through the parahippocampal gyrus, hippocampus, and uh, amygdala to get the, the treatment for the patient. And here uh, we had the honor to have this, this picture uh, illustrating the, the cover for operative neurosurgery. So I'd like to finish thanking because I think that um, we are alone we are nothing. So I'm very grateful to Dr. Evandro uh, for inviting me when, when I came back from US to start working with Dr. Mateus and now Dr. Wen over there at the, our, um, our lab that is the most important here in Brazil for uh, neurosurgeons for going there and studying neuroanatomy that it's the base for all, all our procedures. And here, my team in Beneficencia Portuguesa, and, and of course, Dr. Rotten, here even 14 days before he passed, he was teaching us neuroanatomy. He really loved what he, he did. And he, he always said to us, uh, you are the reason why I wake up every day. I, I really want to come here and teach you and I want you to, to be teachers. I don't want you to keep the knowledge that you learn here. I want you to try to pass. And I, I'm, I know that these um, 25 minutes are not uh, enough. So if you want to learn more and if you have any questions, I'm here. And also you can send me emails and we can keep talking and keep working as he always said. And I promise... I, I promise, he, it was his last words for us, keep working hard, and I promise to keep working hard um, every day of my life to help my patients and to have, help other surgeons to help their patients. So thank you very much. Thank you, Vanessa. Any questions from the audience? Professor Jinsu, want to say something about anatomy? So the Everything for us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Anatomy is the fundamental of the surgery. So maybe Dr. Ma from Ying Chuan, you have some questions. No, you you should switch on your 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 your, your audience. So so I mean so first thanks to the Dr. Vanessa Helena uh, because uh, for mm -hmm. these meetings for our department. I think more than uh, 16 persons is still here to hear your lectures. Uh, and for doctors, for surgeons, also very few of interesting for anatomy, inc including your have a show. You have a show the fever uh, tra trajectory and the deeply uh, anatomies. Uh, our department also have a uh, labor laboratory of the University of Ningxia Medical University, and the Professor Sun okay. also the chief uh, researcher of the, uh, the the laboratory. I also done some works in the uh, anatomy structures. So I think uh, Professor Sun also have interesting for this topic of yours. Uh, welcome, Doctor. Uh, and our president, he will speak something to you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, ready. Uh, thank you very much for every burning professor. 
to give us an excellent lecture. Ready? It make us get the benefit from you. Thank you very much. And also, I want to thank Professor Wu Jinsong and all of audience in Brazil and China. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad when to show my uh, formal invitation for all of Brazil, Brazil friends to my hometown in China. After pandemic disease go away. <laughs> yeah, we hope. We hope so. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the, the the head of the university is serious, so you will be invited to China. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ready. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Last, uh, according to the time difference, so I have to say good night for some <laughs> traveling friends. Thank you very much. Okay. So thank you. Our boss have invent invent you to come to our city. I think I have planning in the future to organize a course of an anatomy course and uh, uh, and this kind of activity. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Great to visit. Feel free to visit northeast of Brazil. We are open for you. Yeah. yeah. Always. Always. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Vanessa, I have one small question. So for young neurosurgeons, they always confuse the the, the anatomical term between the uh, anterior perforated substance, nuclear acuban, and the subs uh, substantial anomia, and the ventral striatum. Can you uh, give us some explanation between the anatomical term? Terms. Yeah, um, maybe I can show you the picture again here, that one, because it's not it's not something that we can see very uh, easily in in books. So it's what it was one of the reasons why I went to the lab. So I wanted to learn deeply this neuroanatomy. So we have the the basal of our brain here. Let's let me try to share again thank you we have here the base of our brain and then um here medially we have accumbens okay it's this area and then laterally we have substantia nominata okay and then they together they form the base of our brain they are part of the base of our brain okay the ventral striatum, um, it's a portion of the, of the, it's the accumbens and also the olfactory, the olfactory tubercle. Oh, I don't have the dissection here, but I can send you later. I have a, a nice dissection that shows both, uh, both structures. So, um, but the accumbens is a portion of the ventral striatum. Okay. Got it? <laughs> I'm clear. So the ventral striatum include all the nuclear cumbin and the substance anominator. Uh, uh, so okay. continue. You say, okay. okay, let me uh, just so one. The ventral striatum is a portion of the accumbens and uh, olfactory tobacco. Okay, so substance nominata, it's basal of our brain. It's another uh, classification, I would say. Okay, clear. Okay, uh, it's a little confusing, but uh, you are getting there. Doctor, Doctor Vanessa, uh, I don't know if the Chinese people know about the Latin because the name innominata, it's no name, and uh, why why like this, this 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 uh, anatomical landmark uh, doesn't have no name yet? Why? Yeah, they they just decided to give so this name, <laughs> to give the, the yeah. name Inominata. I don't know. I, I, uh, there is, I, I've read already uh, something about that. The person that, that uh, found out, I can't remember uh, from the app of my mind, uh, who was the person, but he didn't want to put his name. Because it's very common in anatomy. 
he just wanted to show Inominat to say to call Inominat and <laughs> keep it simple. <laughs> yes. Thank you so okay. much. Yeah. yeah. Now let's go to Ninchia. Ninchia. Melody. How can we say Ninchia? Ninchia. Uh, yeah, Ninchia. Ninchia. <laughs> and to give the opportunity, Professor Ma to tell us his experience on Harris surgical treatment of brain tumors under the ERAS procedure. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. To the meeting is already uh, is, uh, passed for, for three hours. I think uh, this is a very new uh, method. First, I will just thanks to Macro Wagner again. Good, good uh, friend. Mm -hmm. Ciao, ciao, glossy, yeah. glossy for our these meetings. Uh, because uh, I will assure uh, uh, a PPT uh, lectures is uh, not very uh, difficult case, but it's also my opinion. Thinking of, about the for clinic, how to finish our works, how to therapy our patient, uh, because surgical technician, surgical, uh, surgical uh, ability for every doctor is different. But uh, there is also a common problem, how to be a good standard procedure. We follow it, not only doctors, including nurse and assessors and the pathology, nutrition, all of the process, everybody can do a, Perfectly works and get a good result for patient. So it's also a for an administration person such as me. I, I just study how to be a chief. So I should think about it. What is a good procedure for recover uh, total? So I will first show some things. Uh, I have many very bad case in my experience. Uh, I have many case uh, get a bad situation. So I always think uh, what we can do, what we can improve our works. For this case, you can see the patient is a hemangial blast tumor. It's a post fossa. Uh, you can see the legion in Hungary is here. Uh, during operation, I feel it's very, uh, success very easy or maybe very uh, looks uh, looks very well, uh, but the post operation something very uh, have something trouble. So, so let's see. yeah, and uh, post operation the patient have very. Uh, Two days post operation, the patient uh, have some troubles. First day and two days is okay, but the second day he have the uh, constructs granular worsen and uh, also have the uh, difficulty in breathing. And uh, and uh, you can see the post operation uh, two days the uh, imagines. So uh, what's the troubles? What's the problem? So we quickly to done some crisis therapies, including trachealer torment and extend the trachealer drainage, and we save the life of the patient. This is a photo of 10 days. Okay. So post operation two weeks, he, the patient uh, discharged, but it's not good. I think it's a delayed one or, or ten uh, one weeks. So the second case you can see is 72 years female uh, patient. He uh, diagnosis is a left parafacial meningiomas. It looks very easy. The case also with deeply carefully tender tension and pulmonary attention. It looks uh, not demand every uh, every structures and tumors, but uh, also the uh, I, I feel confidence, no problem, but there's also troubles. Post-operation one day, it looks normal. 
But the two days, it's a very huge edema and a little bit of uh, first three days and have a hemorrhage. What's trouble? What's problem? We found in seven days, it's more huge edema, hemorrhage, uh, and we done the MI show the maxillary fossa vein dilation and the pressure. Uh, Sucral satin to sinners and a pressure deficient of the street sinners. So, diagnosis of venous sinners, thrombosis. So, we not to open crectomy again, but just to use the uh, uh, anti uh, coagulant therapy for one month. So, it's very difficult because the one month is recovered. So uh, the three case is also the lateral ventricular epidermal cyst. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, benign lesions. So uh, during operation, dissection and uh, to protection arteries and to uh, also use the idioscopic to assist them to remove uh, all the tumor, but uh, also have problem. Also have problem post operation because the case uh, I, we want uh, more recovery. So he work very early and uh, maybe 28 hours. But uh, six days after surgery, uh, he work and also have a trouble of a, a coma and a very bad situation of uh, also brains and uh, weakness and such can. So we quickly to. Uh, to therapy, but also uh, he delayed for two weeks or three weeks. So for such kind of patient, uh, uh, post the 60 months he recovered, so very delayed. And the third, uh, the fourth uh, uh, case is a 53 years old patient. Uh, we we also to to focus on some detail of how to be a good uh, resumption uh, under the the RAS earlier rescour, uh, uh, rescourry after surgery. But the patient with done many much more things, but uh, post operation he also have trouble. What trouble means? It's a uh, infection. Infection. Post operation infection. It looks normal, but uh, very bad. So my topic today is uh, to be a doctor. So how to decrease the complication and the function deficit for the patient. It's the most important things, including in, intracranial hematoma, cerebral vasculitis, membrane endemia, intracranial infection, hydrocephalus, epilepsy, cerebral fluid leakage, cerebral infection, cerebral and the sinus thrombosis, pneumonia, uh, embolism, and the deep venous thrombosis. But such kind of communication, how to decrease it, how to protect the patient, how we can do. So uh, this is also a conception of ERAS and the enhanced recovery after surgery. Now it uh, can minimal in damage harm for the patient. So we organize a group, uh, group. I, not doctors uh, decided the resumption only. I think including nurse, uh, including pathology, nutrition, and the nurse and operation nurse, and uh, and uh, also not a group can finish the case, so we can recover the complications. So we should have done works and also to uh, write or to to organize the guidelines of our department, not for, for, for internet, like our, our department guidelines, including uh, procedure of uh, uh, nurse, doctor, nurse, and assessor, open surgery, nutrition, and re rehabilitation. So this is uh, also core of the groups. And uh, the, the tumor, but uh, for, I think today, is, Every person must is a surgeon. The core of the practice is a surgery for to get the inheritance. Uh, why? Because to safety, uh, to carefully good technician, and to preserve the first. 
So we should uh, to improve our uh, technicians, including uh, our president, also my teacher, Professor Sun Tao Si, and a former. Why we organize a course of an informal structures, technicians, everything. And others is stressing the foundation. We should know the function and uh, learning the uh, other uh, uh, series, series, including protection values and this kind of things. So this is uh, our some pre uh, precious therapy. So I will, uh, during, uh, under this kind of things, uh, we done some uh, works, and uh, so we will record record the time of the you know, the patient, post operation, first the feelings, first the walking, first the practice, first the, the time. We we, we just uh, the patients are the 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 the, the, the patients everything. This is patient post operations one weeks so we feeling it. Uh, Okay, it cannot open. So it just means it's a pituitary uh, abnormal, uh, 61 years old, uh, using idioscopic tumors. This is the second case of a 28 years old females with uh, Cushing, Cushing uh, syndromes, uh, pituitary and normals. Uh, because it, it, the patient just use. Okay, the patient uh, post operation two hours, the conditions, these videos, and uh, five days he go back home to discharge and everything uh, good conditions. And that's, the patient is also pituitary at a normal. Uh, because for pituitary at this uh, survey, it's more easy to get a good result. So maybe uh, one week, in our one week, he can discharge. Uh, because this is a, a, a grand uh, humans. And uh, this is a patient uh, for Galaumer. Uh, Galaumer is, I think, uh, uh, difference. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, due to the the lesions the location for frank uh, frequent or other functional regions it's a difference. So uh, some cases I think very easy to infect the resultions. Uh, for the case uh, I just the post operation two hours he can work and uh, to get findings and practice one two hours. The case is a. Uh, uh, six, 46 years old, also the, 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 uh, Galeomer, the, the low grade Galeomer. It's, uh, uh, the post operations, I think, uh, four hours, uh, four hours he can work himself and uh, to take the, the, the okay. Um, this is, uh, uh, 43 years old. I show it because uh, uh, micro vagnus have interesting the weak assessor. We have done a finish five cases of uh, this kind of uh, uh, weak assessors uh, to uh, to preserve the deficit. Uh, go, I just show it. Uh, the, the case during operation, intra operation, your physiology monitoring and the location, the function, uh, regions, and also use uh, navigation uh, to to uh, strengthen the regions and also use ultrasound. Ultrasound. This is some uh, this ECS electric stimulation cortex. Uh, so post operation, uh, one weeks he go back home. Yeah. So. This is a, a 39 years old patient is a right temporal lobe epilepsy, uh, each, uh, right temporal lobe. So very quickly, two hour, uh, uh, one, one, uh, one, uh, one day post operation, he can work and to answer questions, have language function. And this is a 28 years old females with gaumer with a right frontal lobe, uh, the tumor is a, a little bit more high, more, more deeply. Uh, it also have a, have a relation with the colostrum. So it removes the whole of the, the, the tumors. 
the soul, I want to show the the machine is a muscle, muscle practice, post operation, one way, one hours. Uh, we use it to uh, a, a friend and uh, uh, venous thrombosis. And this is a 1949 years old male with the right camera lob. Uh, we use operation and also to focus on Iran's 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 works. Uh, so I think we show the pituitary adenoma, show the meningioma, show the glioma uh, for brain tumor. Uh, if we more carefully to focus on it, I can we can finish it uh, very quickly, one or two weeks, but not to for every. This is heaven. The work has a standard, but the time of this child recovery, no standard. It's my opinion. Uh, this is uh, this works for some uh, deeply regions, uh, lesions for this kind of uh, the the fifty years old female doctors. It's a fourth ventricular lesions uh, with down operation uh, and. Uh, 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 remove the tumors so for this, this patient. The three days a key can work. So, so uh, sometimes also some people say so to work more earlier is more dangerous. To 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 drinking fading is more dangerous. But uh, you should uh, every person to 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 chance or the good. Good time is finished. So this case is a meningioma. Meningioma is, uh, I think, more easy. But some uh, huge and uh, uh, dangerous regions is more difficult. For this uh, olfactory, olfactory sacral meningiomas, so we use uh, uh, sub subtender, uh, uh, if you call it OC. OLCS uh, approach to remove it. So to uh, so, 28, yeah, 28 hours he, he can work. So we use the ultra uh, QSA to, I think if you want to to, fin, to, to, to achieve your resumption, you should motivation, use some good equipment, don't to, to push, to, to, to catch the, 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 the the, the structures and the regions. So this is also a 60 years old mini tumor of Andrew school base mm -hmm. three days. Wow. Right. Then this is a 50 years old female uh, uh, female mini tumor of a school base. Uh, okay, remove. Uh, so we quickly to see this case. Uh, this is a post operation, uh, just 20 hours we, we can do the muscle uh, practice. So, post, uh, this is also some uh, many journal, two days, uh, two hours can work. So I think more easy. This is also the uh, left pair of thoughts on many journal. But it looks very small, but it also has some risk because of venous, as people know. We should to finish the case between the two venues, the very narrow spaces to room it. So, uh, post operation 30 minutes, we've done the uh, practice. So, it's useful for uh, recovery. And this is a post forza. Uh, Tent or mini journals, post operation two days, uh, two, two, two days he can work. Uh, but we should uh, make it uh, more uh, carefully how to work uh, because work have, uh, have risk. You, you may be just two hours to finish work, not uh, directly uh, get up and work, it's dangerous. This is, I show just some case of the seropontal androids, meaning dromos, uh, quickly too. And also to show some pediatric case, this is a medulla blast tumor. Medulla blast tumor for uh, 
three years old male uh, little boys to remove it. It's also uh, use uh, uh, inferior inferior uh, superior tender uh, superior tender approach to remove the lesions uh, post operation recoveries. Also show some uh, patient of the uh, medulla blast uh, medulla blast tumor uh, WNT. It's a topic and uh, the uh for case it's also uh, easier to remove and uh, also also a problem for pediatric because my my substance is also can so pediatric and this is also a female 30 years old uh, medial blast tumor uh, so he post of uh, post uh, of, uh, three days he can work and uh, independently so the uh, more important thing is the uh, technician of the surgical mortation and the softly mm, and uh, i also agree eager so to to make the surgical more safe and the more simple so this is a two years old female pediatric uh, fossa post fossa medial blast tumors it's a uh, location here remove it uh, seven days uh, discharge and this is also a medial blast tumor uh, this is uh, also a medial blast tumor of 22 years old post is post seven days and uh, um, he can work, and this is also female, five years old, post uh, 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 twenty uh, uh, three days to work for work, uh, and also difficult, but uh, little baby can work very well. So it's uh, more easier to more carefully, and this also the patient of five years old. Uh, it's a uh, uh, medulla blast tumor, a very huge, huge tumors, but the case is okay. This is also a, a left occipital vascular malformation for the little baby to remove it. Uh, and also seven days he can work very well. Uh, so. <laughs> So seven days uh, remove all of tumors. Seven days. So uh, I just show some case. Uh, it's not difficult, but we connection, including collection meningioma, pituitary adenoma, and the glial group groups. We found, uh, including this kind of uh, details, we focus details. Everything more better, including time of the eating the nutrition balance and the three days of uh, operation uh, time uh, uh, discharge time and also we uh, the country contractor every details i think we can such kind of uh, case can can we uh, finish it uh, we want in the future to 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 organize this this works more better and also want to get some of the uh, colleagues give us uh, suggestions. Uh, it's uh, in the future we hope we can decrease complications, avoid hospital visits, and shorten hospital times. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ma. So, uh, Marcos, as the time is uh, very late in Brazil, so. Uh, I think this session will be uh, closed and the next session will be uh, uh, held in the Chinese uh, uh, Neurosurgical Society. We will discuss in Chinese. Uh, so thank you again, uh, Professor uh, Louise Bob, uh, Professor Hudo, uh, Bene uh, uh, sorry for my pronunciation. Vanessa. Advisor. Vanessa. Thank you all for your initiating uh, this uh, webinar between China and uh, Brazil. I think this is a very good platform, uh, not only for exchange the philosophies, the surgical philosophy, but also 
or exchange our uh, friendship between uh, Chinese Neurosurgical Society and the Brazilian Neurosurgical Society. So thank you again for all participants, for your lectures, very beautiful lectures, and uh, for all questions, for all comments. Thank you so much for your participation. Yeah. And Melody, please, would you give a, a final message for the Chinese people? Say that you are glad to have this opportunity, and Professor Wu will give his time for us. Hey, 谢谢李大夫, see you tomorrow in the operating theater. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Uh, but uh, 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 if uh, you have time, you can stay here, uh, listen again, uh, listen and continue. Uh, 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 he speaks English. It is just a child and a practice. Uh, very young, handsome boy. Show it. Uh, okay, uh, good morning everyone. It's my great honor to introduce our work uh, in this uh, meeting. Uh, first, let me uh, express my appreciation to the uh, organizers for give, giving me this opportunity. Uh, and uh, I, my name is Hua Jianhao, and I'm from uh, Neurosurgery Department in the General Hospital of Ningxia Medical University. Today, my topic is the multimodality uh, techniques of treating treatment of glioma located in uh, functional areas. Uh, as we all know, the glioma is the most common malignant tumor, brain tumor. And the comprehensive treatment, including uh, the surgery and uh, the radiotherapy and the chemotherapy, uh, is progressing, uh, is progressing uh, continuously. Uh, however, the outcome of this malignancy is still not improved. Uh, the post-operative media uh, survival is less than uh, one year uh, for patients with high-grade uh, glioma's. Uh, the aim of uh, uh, precession therapy is to uh, uh, to resect the tumor completely on the uh, basis of uh, brain function uh, brain function preservation. Uh, but the glioma biological characteristics made the uh, difference uh, difference of tumor pathological uh, feature is a fundamental uh, factor uh, to determine the prognosis of the disease. Uh, the glioma is always in infiltrating growth, so the, uh, the tumor boundary is not very uh, clear uh, in the operation. So if we decide to remove the tumor completely, we have to enlarge the resection uh, scope. Uh, and at that time, uh, the brain function protection, uh, such as the motor and the language uh, function, is vital important in the operation. Uh, however, there are many factors uh, which can bring difficulties uh, to the uh, function preservation, such as uh, the anatomic deformation caused by the uh, tumor and uh, the individual differences in different uh, patients and uh, the uh, surgeon's judgment in the operation. 
so a, a, a practical technique uh, called the functional brain mapping technique uh, has been applied in such operations. Uh, this technique is a functional uh, description of cerebral cortex anatomy and it can evaluate the uh, distribution of brain functional areas and also assist uh, the cl uh, clinicians in acute uh, positioning. Uh, in the processing of functional mapping, uh, uh, function, functional brain mapping, the region of interest, uh, interesting is uh, very important. It is the, uh, the area where we are focusing on. Uh, the following uh, techniques are included in the function brain mapping, such as uh, uh, functional MRI and the uh, different tensor imaging and uh, the uh, ECS and so on. Uh, so the multi-modality technique is the great application of that, uh, of, of that uh, technique. It can help us to understand the details of anatomy and uh, the relationship between the uh, between the tumor and the uh, the tumor and the brain or fibers, it also can get uh, uh, surgical treatment exactly. Uh, this is uh, this is the locating the motor area uh, combined uh, the rest uh, functional MRI and the ECS uh, to uh, locate locate the motor area. And uh, this is the uh, neural fibers with DTI fiber tracking technique to locate the, the several cortex mot uh, motor area. Uh, this is the several cortex language area and the viral area. Uh, so now I'm going to show uh, show you about, about uh, some cases and the, the first two case, uh, cases. Uh, received the, the re, uh, operation in weak anesthesia, uh, and the tumor was at the uh, functional area. The first case, uh, the brain tumor is near the motor cortex. Uh, this is a, a 53 year old uh, male. Uh, the uh, the preoperative pre diagnosis is a low grade, uh, low -grade glioma and uh, the secondary uh, epilepsy. Uh, this is uh, a preoperative CT scan. We can see the mixture de testing. Uh, this is the uh, uh, MRI. The different tissue imaging. Uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, intraoperative intraoper intraoper position. We choose the satisfactory uh, position for the patient, and uh, uh, an anesthesiologist can talk with him. We tested the, the, this patient, this patient's uh, motor function during the operation uh, to make sure that the uh, um, to make sure. Oh. Uh, and we tested the patient's oh. motor function during the operation to identify the. To identify the uh, circles and uh, mark the motor area, uh, when we uh, then we can make sure that the motor area function is good. Uh, all the procedures are uh, were in awake anesthesia. At the first day, this patient uh, at the first at the first day, this patient can walk around with the help of his family. Uh, this is a post-operative uh, th uh, three days uh, MRI. Uh, and we, uh, we examined this uh, patient uh, at the third day uh, after operation. Uh, this patient can move his uh, limbs uh, very well. At the uh, fifth day uh, after the operation, this patient can walk uh, uh, without uh, walk around without any help. The second case, uh, the second case, uh, the brain tumor is near the language cortex. 
Uh, this is a uh, 63 year old female. Uh, the preoperative uh, operative diagnosis is uh, uh, the glioma and uh, the secondary epilepsy. Uh, this is the, our uh, preoperative uh, MRI. The, uh, the preoperative, uh, preoperative uh, different things are imaging. In this operation, we ask the patients some questions and give some pictures to test the language function. Uh, at the same time, we stimulated the cortex. Uh, once, once we uh, stimulated the function area, uh, she comes to be, then we mark the language, uh, language area. Other procedures is also uh, in a weak anesthesia. We can hear that uh, this patient uh, can speak, uh, 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 speak uh, clearly and uh, smoothly. This is the post-operative uh, CT scan. There is no uh, bleeding on the post-operative uh, MRI. Uh, at the uh, first, after the operation, after the operation, we tested uh, we tested uh, her language function again. Uh, fortunately, she can speak uh, uh, also uh, clearly and uh, smoothly, and uh, she can also understand uh, uh, what the pictures mean. We showed to her. Uh, the both uh, patients' KPS is uh, improved significant, significantly after the operation. Uh, the, uh, the other two cases uh, is a uh, common glioma. Uh, the third case is a uh, uh, oligogenital glioma. Uh, uh, this is a, a 30 year old female. Uh, the preoperative uh, pre diagnosis is a glioma at the left frontal lobe. Uh, we can see the tumor is located in the left frontal lobe. The middle line shift, uh, shifted obviously, and the tumor was no enhancement on the contrast enhanced imaging. The tumor was removed with the assistance of navigation and the ultrasound. Uh, the pathology is oligodendroglioma, and uh, this patient uh, received the radiotherapy uh, after, the after the operation. Uh, this picture has the falling up images until four years after our operation. Uh, we can see that the tumor uh, didn't uh, recur. Uh, the last case uh, is also a low grade glioma. Uh, this patient is a 40 year old male. Uh, the preoperative diagnosis is also glioma at the uh, right temporal lobe. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, there are some mistakes. Uh, the last case, uh, the last case of his pathology is uh, the low grade uh, glioma, and this is the post operative uh, uh, imaging that uh, the two months uh, we can see there is no uh, uh, glioma, no tumors. Uh, so, uh, the multi modality technique uh, can combine the different uh, imaging and uh, it can help doctors to, uh, to achieve the efficient and uh, precise scores. Uh, uh, the technique application can get us to uh, remove uh, to remove uh, the glioma in functional areas on the basis of func functional function preservation. So, to some extent, it can also prolong uh, the patient's uh, survival uh, period. Uh, and that's all my speech. Thank you.
Is here. Is here. 这里就是马主任，你们现在的那个唤醒 awake surgery 也都是常规在开展了，对吧？对对对，这个。早期还是华山医院给了很多的指导和建议，非常感谢。嗯，好，那下面我我我有个卫星会是吧？马马马，对对,对,对有个卫星会、嗯。那我就顺着前面的那个 talk， 就是 dominant side insular glioma， 我就放一个手术视频吧。哦，您中文讲吧，这样我们都听得轻松一些啊。对，我我有配音，这个视频有配音。Okay. 呃呃，大家哎，我请的我那个呃那个哈米做的哦，对，这个是呃潘志光做的配音，他是标准的美语啦，呃，大家呃听一下吧，谢谢。谢谢谢谢。You will illustrate a dominant left intra low grade glioma performed under a wake mapping. A 37 year old male patient who is right hand dominant. Presented with intermittent numbness of the right extremities over a year. There were no significant findings in the initial physical exam. Cognitive tests showed mild anomia. CT scan indicated a heterogeneous low density left intraoral mass, which was hypo intense on T1 weighted sequence and hyper intense on flare sequence, with no significant contrast enhancement. MR spectroscopy detected increased colon and decreased NAA composition, and the maximum colon to NAA index was 1.8, suggestive of neoplasms. Diffusion tensor imaging tractography was used to perform motor and language fiber tracking, revealing various eloquent subcortical fibers adjacent to the lesion. Functional MR revealed motor and language activation cortex. These process data were crucial for pre-surgical planning and exported to the intraoperative navigation system. The patient was placed supine with his head turned 45 degrees contralaterally and the neck slightly extended to facilitate good venous return. A bone flap was tailored according to the neural navigation imaging. Tack-up sutures were placed around the edges of the bone window. The patient is then awakened And subsequently, mapping is performed. Upon opening the dura, a six-contact strip electrode placed directly on the cortex was utilized to identify the central sulcus by polarity reversal of the median nerve SEPs. Stimulation was then performed over the entire exposed cortical surface using a bipolar electrical stimulator probe to identify motor and language cortex. These piled-up sites were labeled and covered. Neural navigation was used to precisely mark the boundaries of the lesion. The arachnoid was dissected, and the cilium veins were protected. In non-eloquent areas of the inferior frontal gyrus, fistulation of the cortex was performed to expose the insula. The neural navigation system was implemented throughout the surgical procedure to not only help the surgeon determine the extent of tumor innovation, but also help identify important anatomical structures. CUSA was used to gradually resect the tumor beneath the frontal operculum. Throughout the resection, the patient was routinely tested for speech, sensory, and motor function. Especially when resection was adjacent to the eloquent cortex or pathways, tissue samples were sent for frozen section. The results suggested low-grade glioma. The temporal operculum was fistulated in a similar fashion for further resection of the insular lesion in zones three and four, according to the Berger-Sinai classification. The MCA bifurcates at the Lyman insula, forming various M2 branches on the surface of the insula. Resection should be carried out in between these vessels. 
if the tissue selection parameter of CUSA was set above three for vascular protection. Position deep to the insular cortex are the extreme capsule colostrum, containing the external capsule and the internal capsule. Subcortical stimulation was performed to identify language pathways using a monopolar probe. The unsolid fasciculus, the inferior frontal occipital fasciculus, all course at the same depths under the inferior limiting sulcus. The lateral lenticular striated arteries, which supply the internal caps and putamen and globus pallidus, should be spared. Electrocoagulation should be avoided if possible. Continuous language and motor subcortical mapping for identification of the internal capsule and cortical spinal tract during the resection of zone four tumors is very important. The temporal horn was exposed. The resection cavities were rinsed repeatedly with warm saline until hemostasis was achieved. Then, surgical was injected into each cavity. Pre-surgical planning goals. The bone flap was restored and routine closure was carried out. The histopathological diagnosis was astrocytoma grade 2. The molecular pathology revealed IDH1 mutant and MGMT promoter methylation. These results suggested that the patient has a relatively good prognosis and is chemosensitive. Therefore, no adjuvant radiotherapy or chemotherapy was necessary. The patient was stable at the six-month follow-up, and the imaging evaluation results were satisfactory. The patient's cognitive function returned to the preoperative baseline level. Oh,谢谢,谢谢大家的关注,这是今天我们卫星会的内容。那么接下去马主任,您继续主持后面几个讲课吧。So, um, uh, so next topic is it is topic expanding the transnosal protraocular tumors. Uh, we selected the topic is uh, is uh, also a very hard, hot, and very new uh, technicians for normal uh, uh, hospitals. 
So we, we welcome to Dr. Liu to show it. Uh, good, good morning, every teacher. Uh, the endoscope transdermal surgery has become a, a preferred approach in pituitary surgery, mainly because of improved resolution, which leads to less uh, pure uh, operative complications in, pair, uh, in comparison with a microscopy approach. Uh, however, adopting extended uh, uh, and nasal approaches to the skull base is still challenging in many centers for various reasons. So let me show you uh, about some uh, neuro neurotomy about the cellar region. <coughs> uh, the media of opticodid recess is an uh, important landmark because it is uh, it is presents uh, ventral aspect of the uh, pneumatized middle clinoid uh, process. It also marks the media aspect of the paracellular cordic canal and the cavernous sinus. Uh, the lateral edge of the cellar and the uh, inframedia infra as part of the optic nerve. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> and the uh, export of the bone, uh, bone landmarks among, uh, along the posterior siphonite wall. A uh, bone is removed laterally to the level of the, <coughs> of the media uh, optic coated recesses. Uh, inferiorly about half down to the anterior cell wall to protect the pituitary gland and uh, superiorly to the level of the posterior aspects of the planum siphonate. Uh, this is the and the nasal also tear me over the cell wall. The dual matter over the caudate arteries uh, has been uh, partly resected. The media, the med, the media optic coded point uh, marks the middle uh, clinoid. This point is important landmark if it is ident identifiable before the start of the bone work. So you can see uh, impending endoscope uh, transcendental surgery managing uh, every kind of skull based new plasms. So let, let, let me introduce our experience in uh, expanded endoscope transcendental surgery managing skull based neuroplasm. This is a case one, uh, a patient, a, 30, a 33 year old patient granted at the hospital with hand aid and decreased visual, uh, visual activity for three months. The patient take a, a operation of craniotomy for a cranial Cranial fertility three months ago in other hospital. The osteological examination so showed that uh, <clears throat> the best credit visual activity was 2. Point, uh, 0. 0.2 in the right eye and the hand motion in the left eye. Visual field testing showed temporal field de uh, defect on the right eye. The patient's uh, ending logical examinations was normal. This is the MRI showed Reviewed a uh, cystic and the solid supracellular uh, mass of uh, 4.2 centimeters. And, and uh, the diagnosis uh, is, is a recurrent uh, cranial cranial So the expanded endoscope uh, and, in, in, and the nasal operation was performed, and the tumor was uh, uh, completely. Uh, resected. So let's see the operation video. Uh, you can see this is uh, uh, aperture center sphenoidus, and uh, and the facial uh, and the facial lateral donor side and uh, 
uh, five donor sites are prepared in anticipation of cranial phase dysfunction. A routine nasal uh, mucosal preparation is, is preferred. Uh, and the and and the uh, nasal uh, septal um, pentacle mucosal flap is prepared before the operation. This is a warmer. And then we use the, uh, we use the, the shoe, the, the bone uh, uh, subcations in the sifnoid signers. A high, a high speed uh, diamond bit drill is used to remove bone over the cellar tub, uh, tubercle, a uh, tuberculum cellar and the posterior portion of the claim uh, sifnoidal. Sif, a uh, bone removal extends laterally to the medial obturated uh, recesses. The bone is uh, initially shelled out uh, or stained using the drill and then removed using the crossing ruler. And cuts the dural. You can see this is the optic nerve and the tumor originated from the uh, pituitary stalk. This, this is the solid, solid mass. Uh, when we use the endoscope to uh, observe, observe the third the, you, we can see the little nodule uh, on the base of the third ventricle. And the, and the little nodule is uh, removed. And we use the water to wash the operation area. Mm -hmm. You can see this the optic nerve this is a, a communicating artery. And then we use the uh, uh, use the uh, and use the dual sub substitute and uh, facial craft to restrong the the, uh, the the skull base. This is a side uh, side side fat graph for packing the cellar. And this is a dual uh, sub, uh, uh, this is a facial craft to the uh, uh, subdural. And lastly, we, we use the nasal septal flap to cover the, the uh, cover it. And the last, use the thin energy form to, to fix it. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a post operation. Uh, the CT scan showed the tumor was totally removed. And the uh, 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 his, his logical examination showed uh, uh, the diagnosis was uh, a cranial phase geoma. And the, 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 <coughs> the second patient, uh, the patient was, uh, was 40. Uh, a 48 year old male pre presented with headache and decreased the visual activity for the past two years. Uh, uh, and the uh, osteological examination revealed uh, uh, two, uh, uh, 0 0.2 uh, ocular dexter, a finger conking ocular sensor, and a bitemporal 
a field uh, field de defective, and the uh, and the cortisol uh, the uh, end uh, end logical examination showed the cortisol was uh, uh, was uh, all all low. Uh, so we used the hydrocortisone uh, to improve the harming uh, harming. And this is a, a pre-operation uh, MRI. You can see, see the tumor was so so big, and uh, grow is too too huge to grow into the uh, third ventricle. So uh, the the diagnosis is a giant uh, pituitary adenoma so, and uh, expanded endoscope and and the nasal op opening uh, was performed. This, uh, this is uh, uh, cell, uh, the base of the cellular region and use the drill to move the bone. Mm. This is the media uh, opticoded resonance because this, this is a, a optic nerve. So when we use the drill to to remove the bone, uh, use the water to look, um, to down the temperature. Use a knife to to cut the tumor. Is close the tumor. This is a this is a tumor. This is a tumor. This is a uh, this is a supracellular tumor. When we remove the supracellular tumor, we uh, change the thirty degree uh, endoscope to to observe uh, to cut tumor. And tumor was uh, was not soft and uh, and a little hot. Uh, you can see uh, the tumor on on the uh, third ventricle was uh, was removed, and then see the neurotomy. We can see this is a uh, uh, we can see this is a uh, uh, intro uh, in. Interventrical foramen. This is a, a bi, uh, bilateral intraventricular foramen, and this area is the aque aqueduct of severus. And we use the water to wash the uh, blood. And uh, and then we use the uh, use the left 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 part donor side to repair the uh, cigar base. And this and this is the facial craft. And then it's used the uh, uh, nasal septal uh, flap to cover the, 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 the region. This is the post operation. Uh, the CT scan shows the tumor was uh, uh, totally removed. And the and the patient the patient the same uh, same term was uh, was mine. 
after the operation. <coughs> For summary, in select patient, it means the intestinal and endoscopic approach offers many advantages over the uh, trans transcranial quality, including uh, direct access to the long axis of pre skull based tumors. Uh, and the last, a uh, thorough understanding of paracellular skull based anatomy is important for safe completion of the bone work. Patient selection is the one of the most important factors in achieving good outcome. You know, good, uh, out, good outcome. Uh, over various use of uh, uh, endoscope skull based approaches for purely selected patients uh, often leads to uh, this disparity in the results. Thank you. So, we will finish. 呃,你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你
。哎，当然，中国也在不断的发展，特别改革开放四十年以后，我们的神经外科距离世界一线水平的距离越来越近了，在某些领域，甚至于可以跑到了世界一流的呃阶段。这个是应该非常可喜的，但是我们不能骄傲，一定要有谦虚的，呃，心理，向世界神经外科的同道，特别一些先进的理念的学习吧。呃，这是我自己的一点体会。好，马主任，您在最后给一个总结意见吧。可能孙校长已经下线了，您给一个总结话吧。你看那个孙校长还在线。哦哦，好像不好意思，那个孙校长，您给我们最后们最后给我们总结一下吧。给我们国内神经外科界，特别年轻医生，给我们几给我们一些寄语吧。谢谢孙校长。呃，先谢谢金松教授啊，衷心感谢。因为对位于西部的一个民族自治区的神经外科来讲，这样一个机会确实是难得的。呃，所以我首先对金松教授表示感谢。刚才就会议本身的一些学术问题啊，我觉得。金松教授刚才说了很很很好的一些观点，呃，巴西的整个神经外科我听了一下去，的确，呃，有些方面还是整体上确实很不错的。呃，我回结合我们的工作啊，你比如说这个导液的，包括白纸研究，我们也是前早期就开始做了一些工作，呃，但精细的程度。可能不如巴西的有些工作，因为他在高层实验室，这个学习以后开展的。但是我们从时间上，我们的工作并不晚。当然了，包括金松您呃介绍的这个优势的导液的胶质瘤手术，那么也给我们很多的启发。我们呢，可作为导液，大家也知道，我在导液上也是动手比较早的一个学者吧，尤其是导液癫痫。那么对比了一下，我们呢这几年有些工作呢，相对呢有点迟缓了。呃，我们有些工作是动的不动手很早，但是持续性、深度上有些不够。呃，临床的工作呢，刚才尤其马辉教授介绍我们呢，在 e r a s 理念下开展的工作，包括我们年轻的呃霍医生介绍我们的术中的清醒麻醉状态下开展的功能区的语言呀、运动的保护。那么这些工作，但是我们包括 PPT 上，我们的介整个介绍啊，跟这个巴西的比啊，我刚才跟马总也讲，你看我们手术的有些术中，我们展示出来的一些片子，就显得有点红了。那么人家巴西，你看特别注意，做到生物照相的时候，周边周围的棉片连那个线粒粉色都还在，显然是这些问题上，我们将来在交流中应该给予注意的。呃。完了，学术上还有很多的想法。我想呢，重点的我还是想，待会下线以后啊，我们内部的有些，是我们宁夏神经外科的同仁们，我有些话想多说的。我也借这个机会呢，除了感谢金松教授以外呢，那个对所有我们的同道，我指的国内的啊，能够在线上呢参与这样一个活动，表示衷心的感谢。呃，希望呢以后。那么多多支持我们宁夏神经外科的工作，呃，尤其是像一些发达地区的啊，像吴劲松教授这样，向吴劲松教授学习，多支持我们西部，响应党中央的号召，西部还在开发过程中嘛，需要得到更多的支持，再次表示感谢。谢谢谢谢谢谢孙校长，谢谢孙校长前辈的寄语，万分感谢，谢谢谢谢马主任。那就再见吧，下线。<笑>再见，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，再见，嗯，谢谢。这个，这个可以。